In this video, I'm going to show you one of the most amazing crushing attacks from the World Cup. It's a game from the semi-final tie-break match between Nurkul Salimova from Bulgaria against Anna Musichuk from Ukraine. And this game has it all. This is probably the most crushing victory you will see in the entire World Cup. Let's have a look. It's a tie-break. The first two regular games have ended in a draw. Then tie-break started with rapid games. Both players managed to win one game. And now Salimova playing with the white pieces in a 10 plus 10 game. And uh, this is going to be very exciting. And I'm sure you're going to learn quite a bit how to build up such an amazing attack. Let's have a look. Because uh, the game starts with the move 1d4, d5, c4. D takes c4. It's the queen's gambit accepted. Knight f3, knight f6, e3. E6, bishop takes c4, c5. Very standard way of uh, developing. And after castling, black decides to play here the move a6. There are other moves as well, but a6 is considered to be the main continuation as black is considering to play the move b5 followed by bishop b7 when the bishop would be actively placed on, uh, on the long diagonal. Would be a nice square to go to. And white has to figure out what to do. Are you going to deal with with uh, Black's plan? Are you going to anticipate or do you continue with one of your own developing moves? Well, Salimova comes up with a remarkable idea. It's the move Rook E1, but it's actually one of the um, latest uh, innovations in this uh, opening line. There are two ideas. First idea is with the move Rook E1, you're trying to prepare to advance the pawn uh, to E4. And if black would play here to move b5, you're ready to come back with the bishop to f1. Now you may think, well, the bishop is really far away. The advantage is that the bishop is not standing in the way of either the queen or the rook. So there are definitely some advan uh, the advantages. You can still try to get in this move e4. We don't know what would have happened in uh, in that case because Anna Muzichuk had a different idea. Played here to move knight c6, logical developing move. White also develops her knight to c3, and only now the move b5 was played. And then, okay, bishop f1 is a logical uh, move to uh, consider, but also bishop d3 is, uh, is an interesting uh, move. The bishop is more actively placed, although it's blocking the, the path of the queen, but it should be pointed out that c takes d4, e takes d4 doesn't win a pawn, because knight takes d4 is met by knight takes d4, queen takes d4, and we have a skewer. Bishop takes b5 with check, a takes b5, queen takes d4. That's game over, that wins the queen. It's a very well-known trap and we will see this motif uh, later on as, um, as well. So after bishop d3, black stays away from the pawn on d4, develops the um, bishop to b7 and white plays the move a4. This is of course one of the drawbacks from black's perspective, having that pawn on uh, b5. White is trying to attack it, put it under pressure. Black has to advance the pawn to, uh, to b4, attacking the knight on c3. And now the main plan has been revealed because with the bishop on d3, now the move knight e4 is a possibility. This is a rare uh, position, has not been uh, seen at at the highest level many times. There are just a few games. One of the ideas is that after knight takes e4, there's bishop takes e4. And now the bishop is putting a bit of pressure on this uh, diagonal. It's probably still playable for black, but it's not what you want. What should black do instead? It's not easy at uh, all. But the move played by Anna Muzichuk here, c takes d4, is a move I really dislike. I'm gonna explain you very soon uh, why. But first, the best move here for black it's a rare move. It's the move knight to a5 with the idea to open up the diagonal for your bishop. So you're attacking that, um, that knight on uh, e4. And if you would take the pawn on c5, bishop takes c5, d takes c5. Okay, white is a pawn up, but this pawn is not too dangerous. Black can castle, for instance, here. And then uh, you have ideas of trying to regain the pawn, either with your rook or maybe with a queen, maybe with a knight. White has the bishop pair, but white also still need to make some effort to get these pieces into play. I think Muzichuk was not entirely aware with all the finesses of this uh, position, and therefore she didn't want to give up that pawn on c5, which is under threat. Therefore she decided to take first on d4, but now there is knight takes f6 with check. 
If you do take back with the queen, there is e takes d4. Once again, pawn on d4 cannot be taken because the queen on d1 indirectly defends it. Bishop b5 is on the agenda. But also, let's say if you play a, a random move, let's say you go rook d8, there is this move bishop to uh, g5 and the queen is trapped in the middle of the board. That's also one of the drawbacks having the queen on f6. If you play the move h6 to prevent bishop g5, there is this move d5, and here we see why it's so nice to have this rook on the half open file. Thanks to this move d5, we are taking the knight, we are putting pressure against the pawn on e6. Black is struggling with that king. So, after knight takes f6, g takes f6, white recaptures with the e pawn. I think with this exchange of uh, pawns in the center, White's rook has been activated for free. And I really dislike Muzichuk's uh, decision. But okay, it's a blitz game. These decisions are made uh, impulsively. It's still a game, of course. And uh, But you, you got to watch out. Your, your king is a bit unsafe in the center. Also, if you would ever castle kingside, I'm not sure the king would be much better off with his uh, double pawns there. What black definitely should try to do is try to get a grip on the d5 square. I was thinking maybe knight e7 with the idea to go knight d5, but for instance now, if white plays a5, uh, the knight comes to d5, then knight d2 is a nice uh, move to bring the knight to e4 to open up the path for the queen to come to h5, and still there are long-term problems regarding that king. So black instead played here knight a5. It's very clear that Musichuk had seen Ideas, uh, like I've mentioned before, we made the correct move, uh, knight a5, two moves earlier. But now this rook is really, really strong. And the question is, how is white going to improve her position? Bishop f4 was played. Another interesting move worth mentioning is knight h4 to prepare the queen to join the uh, game very soon with devastating threats against uh, the pawns on um, e6 and, uh, and f7, for instance. That's one idea. I like also bishop f4 from a human perspective, but here I think Musichuk makes a serious mistake. She goes for the move rook c8, and instead, I believe that black should aim for the exchange of pieces. Bishop d6, and uh, if you take, you take back with the queen. Black is sort of all right. If you go bishop h6 to prevent the black king from castling, now bishop f8 does make a lot of sense, hoping to trade off uh, bishops. But let's have a look. Bishop, um, sorry, rook c8 was uh, was played in the game. And now queen to e2. And here we see immediately the drawback of black's previous move as the pawn on a6 is under threat. Bishop d6 played now. If you do take on d6, the queen recaptures and defends the pawn on a6 at the same time. Black is all right. But bishop h6 is a much better continuation because now bishop f8 is no longer possible. You're just going to take it. And then in at the end... The pawn on a6 is still hanging. So black got to do something about that pawn. However, if you play queen b6, then the queen is no longer defending the pawn on f6. There's bishop g7 with a double attack. That's going to be game over. White is winning material. In the game, knight b3 was played attacking the rook. And the rook comes in to d1. Excellent decision. And uh, now black has the possibility of winning a pawn by taking on uh, f3. Queen takes f3. Knight takes d4, but after queen e4, look, the knight is hanging. Bishop takes a6 is on the agenda. And I think black has violated all the principles of the opening uh, by weakening the king side structure. The king is still in the center. Pieces are hanging. All white pieces are coming alive. This looks really, really bad. So black is not interested in taking the pawn. Played here the move. Queen to, um, to a5. And with queen a5, you're trying to... Look for ideas like um, like queen h5. Maybe the rook can come to the g5. And together with the bishop, the queen, and rook, there could potentially be some counter attack. But the big question is, how is white going to make progress? All the white pieces are nicely placed. And what you need to do when you have a lead in development and the opponent's king is stuck in the center, open the position. So the move d5 is a huge blow. This is a total, totally killer idea putting pressure against the pawn on e6 so white is about to take there if you do take with the queen on um, on d5 there are various good moves bishop takes a6 is the easiest one attacking the queen attacking the bishop if you keep 
the um, bishop defended with your queen with the move queen c6 then there is bishop to b5 and the queen is lost the alternative is to take first on a6 but now after queen takes a6 you get some additional problems as well as queen is hanging rook is hanging while offering the exchange of queens runs into rook takes d6 and the rook captures the bishop protects the queen on a6 it's game over after d5 it's very difficult to make a, a good suggestion. If you try to keep the position closed with e5, bishop g7 will be played, hitting the rook on h8, taking on f6 will be played next, followed by taking on uh, on e5. These two pawns will be gone, activating the white uh, pieces. That's leading to a devastating mating attack. So black instead went for bishop takes d5, but now the bishop no longer defends that pawn on a6. Bishop takes a6 was played, hitting the rook and the rook has to move away where should it go well not to d8 because it runs into bishop to b5 with check the king has only one square to go to but then it's rook takes d5 and the pawn on e6 is pinned so therefore the rook can't be taken and you are just a lot of material up this is just game over let's take it back after um Bishop takes a6. There is rook c5 on the board, played by Muzichuk. But now it's bishop b5 check anyway. The king doesn't have many squares to go to. If you go to e7, well, at least the bishop is now defended. But after bishop uh, e3, rook is under threat. If the rook goes away, it's rook takes d5. Eliminating the defender after e takes d5. There are many good moves. Bishop b6 is probably the most human continuation. It's a discovered check. After the king goes away, you take the queen. That's one idea. Machine says that even bishop f4 with check is even more crushing as after the king goes, you take on d6 and you have a crushing uh, attack as well. Therefore, instead of king e7, king d8 was played so that the king is not stuck on the e file. But now bishop e3 on the board. Anyway, you're threatening to take the rook. The black king is still supported by these two bishops, but not for long. If you would play here rook c8, for instance, the, the the most tempting continuation. This is a move I would play without thinking. Just rook takes d5. Get rid of that bishop. After e d5, you go queen d3. The knight is hanging. If it goes back to c5, it's queen takes d5, attacking the bishop. If the king goes away, there's queen c6 check. And after the king goes away, you take the bishop. That's game over. If you go queen c7, protecting the bishop in this way, then it's bishop f4 with a crushing mating attack along the d-file. White is regaining the material and uh, the attack is still going on. Therefore, rook c7 was, uh, was played. But anyway, rook takes d5 on the board. After e takes d5, the killer move here. I hope you can spot it. It's a beautiful idea was found by Salimova. I give you three seconds. Three, two, one. And now you should have seen it. Otherwise, just pause the video. But here the killer move is bishop to b6. Attacking the queen. Black resigned with the idea that after queen takes b6, there is queen e8 with a beautiful mating pattern. It's a check. Rook takes e8. Rook takes e8. You have sacrificed all the material to deliver checkmate with the rook. And the bishop. That's what we want to see. And you see, this doesn't only happen in textbooks. This doesn't only happen at amateur level. This happens at the highest level. So that's why this game, I think, is so instructive. So many different attacking themes are shown in this uh, example. So I hope you like it. Please let me know your, uh, your thoughts. If you have any other questions, let me know in the chat below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we need to grow so that I can cover 